Good morning and welcome to our Thursday devotion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Romans 6, verses 19 to 21. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. There cannot be a more faithful and vivid picture of the true condition of slavery to sin than that which St. Paul by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, as sketched here. As long as a person has not from his heart turned to God, he continues to serve sin, not by force, but freely. A servant of sin is a slave who does not hate sin, his master, but instead loves it with his whole heart. He is driven to the service of sin more by his heart and inner preference than by outward compulsion. The servants of sin do not serve sluggishly and carelessly, but are highly diligent and untiring in their service. Whoever is engaged in sin carries in his heart the desire to perform it day and night. Therefore, wherever the servant of sin finds an opportunity to engage in it, he seizes this chance without first considering it. It is remarkable that despite the difficult and disgraceful situations in which the servants of sin find themselves, they continue to serve with joy and avoid no sacrifice they must endure on its behalf. This seems incomprehensible, yet it is so. Sin is the cruelest of tyrants, and it makes its servants the most accursed of slaves, yet they serve it willingly. The sensual person sacrifices the health of his body as well as the peace of his soul, to indulge in his sins. And for the purchase of a single hour of pleasure, he endures a life of misery. The drunkard also sacrifices his health in pursuing his pleasure, but that often comes at the expense of his family's happiness, the loss of his good name, and the incurring of the deepest shame and contempt. The covetous person, in order to serve sin, denies himself refreshment and exerts himself day and night, sometimes dying in the process and leaving to his heirs the fruits of his worries. As these examples demonstrate, no one serves a crueler master of life, excuse me, no one serves a crueler master or lives in such miserable slavery as the servant of sin. To what end does a person thus serve sin? Is the final reward so glorious it outweighs all the troubles of the service? Oh, no. The most terrible thing about serving sin is the meager payment one receives for his hard service. For what is the wages of sin? It is, as St. Paul says in today's text, eternal death and damnation. Oh, shameful payment. Oh, bitter fruit. Oh, horrible end. If during his earthly life the servant of sin has to sacrifice the health of his body, rest and refreshment, peace of conscience, good name, in short, everything that has value in this life, what lays in store for such an individual as the end of his life draws near? Will sin merely dismiss its servant without paying him? No. The wages are only more torment. On his deathbed, the sinner is taunted with a foretaste of hell. Sin then reminds the sinner how he has wantonly 
transgressed God's eternal law, angered and offended him, and taken upon himself God's wrath and curse. If at that time the sinner wants to turn to God, sin gleefully cries, it is too late. And the sinner standing before the gates of eternity is cast into a hell of doubt. Then when that tormented person rests himself free from the body covered with the cold sweat of death, Sin accompanies him even to the throne of God, where it accuses him, recounting every evil thing the person did or even thought in life. At that time, of course, it is indeed too late. The time of grace, the time of repentance and conversion has passed. All requests and sighs and tears of the servant of sin will prove futile. God, who is righteous, will pronounce the sentence of eternal death and damnation over him. Then sin will take its pale, trembling servant, carry him away from the presence of God, and cast him into the furthest darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. At last he will be tossed into the fiery sea, where the smoke of his torment will ascend forever. This is the horrifying but true picture the holy apostle draws to show how the service of those who traffic in sin will be rewarded. And so we pray. Grant steadfastness and courage that bravely we contend against the wiles of Satan. O Lord, thy flock defend. Help us to battle well, to triumph for the devil, to overcome the evil and all the powers of hell. Amen. And we also pray, Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> And then we'll also pray together. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for another morning devotion. The Lord bless you throughout the day ahead.